Welcome to my succession tutorial guide for Hasashin. If you guys are new to video and if this is your first time learning succession Hasashin, this video is for you. And so what are we waiting for? Let's get this started. Before we begin, please go ahead and watch this video. It's called how to play any class in one hour. Playing all the class experiences, I want to teach you guys something in that video is skill cooldown slots. And so yeah, you guys, if you guys know how to use these, then just move on. But if you don't, you definitely need to watch that video in order to start this video. And so yeah, we'll see you after watching that video. Let's talk about movement skills. And so we have sand warp. So all we have to do is directional shift, which is shift A, shift W, shift D, shift S. And that's what you guys can do. And it's only like literally two or one second cooldown. And so you guys can basically spam that all the time. And so if you guys don't know what to do, just keep spamming that and you guys get that permanent iframes and super armor. After that, we do have a prime on this one, which we basically have two warp. And so for example, like this, boom, boom. And so now what we can do is basically just hold shift and W and then it casts two ability of sand warp, just like that. We can also go backwards if needed or sideways as well. It's really up to you guys, but just keep in mind that we basically have two sand warp after that, if you guys check my Awakening Hasashin, I talk about the next movement skill that I'm about to teach you. What we're going to talk about next is Prime Sand Slicer right here. After that, we're going to talk about Piercing Tornado. And then after that, we're going to talk about Haleti Assault. So what we want to do now is using Sand Warp and then using one of those abilities. So for example, Sand Warp and then let's try Sand Slicer, which is LMB. Just like that, and then we use that one. And then after that, let's try Piercing Tornado, which is WRMB. So Sand Warp, WRMB. And then after that, we want to do Sand Warp again, and then do Halidi Assault, which is WF. Just like that, guys. And so if you do remember all this correctly, it can look like something like this. And it doesn't really matter, you know, what kind of ability you want to use first for like Sand Slicer, Piercing Tornado, Halidi Assault. It's really up to you. It just depends what's on the cooldown. And so just keep watching your cooldown, what's up. And then you can basically use anything from there. And so it's really up to you guys. So for example, again, just like that. And then let's try other way around. For example, let's try a tornado first, for example. Just like that. And so it really, really doesn't matter. Either you want to use Sand Slicer first, Halade Assault, or Piercing Tornado. And so it doesn't really matter, so it's up to you guys. Keep in mind though that Sand Slicer actually has this, which is a very nice stun once you guys actually hit on PvP. So you guys want to use that maybe on engagement. However, it does not have a forward guard or super armor, so very, very be careful on that situation. Let's say that we did the warp and then we also did sand slicer and let's say that we didn't actually catch a person. Don't worry, what we want to press is actually spacebar and do an easy combo like this. And if you say that the first one didn't CC, at least now you have a backup with the spacebar, which is all's dominion. However, tornado is a very safe landing for CCs. And so for example, like this, and then he also has a super armor and gives a floating. And so that one's really nice for engagement, for example. Halete Soul has a safeguard and has an all DP debuff. So use it on the enemy. So now there are like two strategies to engaging to an enemy, for example, like this. So what we want to do is basically using Sand Warp. And then we can use like Sand Slicer right away to be very quick like this. Or you guys can warp behind them and then turn around and then use a slicer and give them a CC like this. Or if you need more time, if that's too quick, what we want to do basically now is adding Halidi Assault. So after using Sand Warp, we want to use Halidi Assault and it's slower this way. Like this. And then use a slicer, for example, right? So that way you guys can basically, you know, have time on your situation looking at the map or in front of you. So that way you guys can basically have more chance to hit the slicer more accurately. So once again, warp, boom, and then boom. Right, and then using slicer. So once again, with enough practice, you guys can use warp and then use slicer right away if you want. Or if you want to play safe, if they're like close around you, all you want to do is warp and then W, F, and then slicer. For more movement skills, you guys can press K and then go to skill enhancements and then you guys can see shadow slicer and sand tornado. Shadow slicer is really good for PVP and PVE because it does actually give them a really nice CC if you actually land a hit. And also it dashes twice and so it's really really nice to use. However, hitting the Shadow Slicer to the enemy is very very difficult, so just use it as a movement skill. After that, instead of Shadow Slicer, we have Sand Tornado. 
So what this does is that we basically turn into a sand and then basically do a slicer at the end. And then if you actually land a hit, we can give a nice stun. So what you guys want to use for those scenarios is like if you want to try to go behind them, you guys can activate that and then try to sneak up on them and then slice it on the back. However, it does have a 30 seconds cooldown, so you know, if you think that's too long, then you know, Shadow Slicer is where it's at because it's only 16 seconds. You guys can also add this for, you know, your movement skill, and it can be pretty cool, and it's called Hourglass of Defiance. So what this is, is if you press F, it basically makes the tornado right there. And then if you have a close distance around, and if you press F again, we basically teleport where they are. And look at that, it has a floating, and so if you actually land a hit, it can be very, very powerful for PvP. Another good movement skill that you guys can maybe add is called Air Raid Assault. And so what this skill is that what we want to do is press E, and then we need to make sure you guys see this red target right here in front of you. And if you do so, you can basically go behind them and also give a nice CC of floating. So if you guys actually land a hit on a floating or whatsoever, this can be a really nice combo guys, is pressing E and then press R and B after. And then it gives a really nice combo for knockdown and then after that we want to use some crazy combos that I'm about to teach you guys later. Also keep in mind, let's press E again. And then do you guys see that tornado in the back? Hmm, I wonder. Let's try pressing F. Oh my, okay. So if you guys want to be the true assassins of Hasashin, you definitely need to use Hourglass and Arid Assault. They're very very fun things to use. And so yeah, you definitely need to try that out, dude. It's really, really fun. I think that's about it for movement skill for beginners. Now let's talk about some skills that can give you guys a really nice juicy buff. Sand Warp, it does give you guys all evasion rate of 9%. And so always spam that whenever you guys can and get that easy evasion rate. Sand Slicer, if you use this ability, we automatically get attack speed 10%. So make sure you guys always use it even during the outside of combat. Hourglass of Death, if you guys see like a target right here in front of you and then press Shift F, you guys can basically teleport in front of them. Also has a bound and it has an all AP plus 20. So don't forget to also add that in your movement skill. For Hourglass of Death, try this combo. Press Shift F and then hold RMB after that. It basically uses the Piercing Tornado and then after that it uses Hail Cutter and yeah, it's really really fun skill to use. And so let's try that one more time. Shift F and then Tornado and then press RMB again to go behind them if you want and it also has a super armor for tail cutter And so it's very very nice for that really nice combo sand divider press SF in order to use it And if you do so you get 9% of all accuracy rate It also has a floating and so it can be very nice for PvP However, it does not have a front guard or super armor. So so take it as your own risk I would recommend honestly just buffing it yourself and then engage to the enemy afterwards. Ridge Reaver is Shift RMB, and if you guys use this ability, it gives you guys critical hit rate of 30%. Also has a super armor, so it's really good for engagement in the very beginning, and then using that ability. Before we engage to the enemy, this is what we can do for self-buffing. So what we want to do is Warp, Sand Divider, and then we want to use Sand Slicer. And then if you really want to, you can also add Ridge Reaver at the end. So it would look something like this. And then we basically got evasion rate right there, accuracy, attack speed, and critical rate of 30%. And so that's what you guys can do for just self-buffing before we engage to the fight. Owl's Command, you guys can get this when you guys do the Magnus quest. You have to touch the enemy in order to get your self-buff for all AP plus 20. For example, let's use it right now without the mobs. And we basically can't get the self-buff. However, if we land a hit to the enemy, just like this, now we can get our self buff for all AP plus 20. So this can be really good to add when they actually get a knockdown for example. And then use something like this next to get ourselves like all AP plus 20. Keep in mind that if you guys have a prime and get your black spirit up to 100%, you guys can use a black spirit prime quicksand right here. And look at the, all the debuff that you guys can get to the enemy if they land a hit. Attack casting speed of minus 20% and movement speed of minus 20% as well for 10 seconds. So this can be really good for 3v3 Solari, and then if you actually land a hit on the enemy, you can basically give them a lot of damage, plus has a really nice debuff. And additionally, you guys can also get a self buff for Black Spirit, and you guys can basically get all AP plus 30 and attack casting speed of 25%. And so let's try using it, which is Shift E, and if we do so, we can basically get all the debuffs right here on the enemies. 
and then we get ourselves of all AP 30 right here and then 25% of black spirit. Another cool thing is that people don't really mention is go to your settings and then go to settings, interface, and then mouse interface. And if you guys have a PC, you guys can click on this one, which is use mouse to move. And then look at this. When we do shift E and then pull out your mouse, we can actually move around and use our abilities just like that by you know, bringing out our mouse again and then basically clicking where you want to be using your abilities on. So once again, it would look something like this, boom. And if I want it here, I can basically move it right there, for example, right? Blades pack, you definitely have to put this on a quick slot in order to activate it. What I usually like to do is right here, guys, click the gear on right here and then click yes and then click tab. And that's what I usually like to do. And I want to e-buff personally. And then if I press tab, I basically get critical hit rate of 30%, all accuracy 15, all resistance 30, we ignore all resistance of 30%. Now let's talk about some skills that will give CCs on the enemies. Dune Slash, when we use this skill, it does have a float. However, it does not have any forward guard or super armor. So I highly don't recommend using that in the very beginning when they are not fall down on the ground. And he also has a long skill casting if you guys just try to use it by pressing down C. And so what I recommend is using either Warp Sand or using Ridge Reaver to activate them. For example, let's do Warp Sand and then press C. And then you guys basically can do that. Or when we do Ridge Reaver, you guys can do like this, which is Shift RMB and then press C afterwards. And then use that like that. Next, we have Chosen Blade and we need to press Shift Q in order to activate that. However, there's a CC at the very, very end. And so the thing is with this one is that people can run away still. And so it will be really, really hard to actually knock down a person. What I would maybe recommend is use some kind of float in the very beginning and then use Chosen Blade right away and maybe that if you're lucky, they can get a knockdown on the second one. Keep in mind that Quicksand also has a CC if, if you guys have 100% on BSR. And so when we press Shift E when it has 100%, this is what happens. And then we basically can get it bound. And they can be fully immune as well. And so, you know, you can't really do the combos with that. And so it can be only be helpful during like 3v3 fights, for example. All's Breath is a really nice one, which is Shift F. And if we do so in near close to them, we can basically get close to them and then give a nice bound. So I would recommend this skill in PVPs. We have two really nice skills that you guys can use for range wise and they are actually called Haladi Throw which is down RMB but the thing is Alt Command is down RMB so what you guys need to do is actually lock it and then just put it on a hockey for example as number four and then if you press number four and then have the aim ready onto the enemy and then if you do so they basically can get a stiff just like that. The other CC that we have for Hasashin is right here Ruptor and then if you press RMB with the aim again, boom, and then just like that, it has a knockdown and floating, and then it ends with the floating, and so technically, you know, it's just floating at the end. Another good strategy that we can give CCs to the enemy is pressing number one, which is using this skill that I put it on a hockey, which is called Al's Breath. And if we do so, we basically turn into tornadoes. See now what we can what we can do is basically go sneak on them and then after that double your RMB for like a sand tornado and then give some kind of floating. And you guys can do some kind of cool trick like that. And so that's the really fun part about Succession Hasachin is that on the prime ones, he becomes one of the tornadoes. If you guys play Awakening and have Absolute, he just casts, you know, tornadoes, but on Succession, he actually becomes tornadoes as well. And so this is also a good strategy too that let's say we're all out of stamina as well, just you know running around with you know sand warp and everything and let's say that we're out of stamina too. Another good way to regain your stamina is just pressing number one. And look at that, we basically became a tornado and cloned ourselves as a tornado and then we basically get our full stamina back. And so that's another good strategy guys for 12 seconds. And then after 12 seconds, you know, we do movement skills, movement skills all over again, you know, doing some crazy stuff. And then after that, let's say that we're out of stamina again. Oh, my number one is up. Ooh, we get our stamina back, right? So as a succession house session player, you can never run out, honestly, right? You can never run out of stamina. And if you do, you're doing something wrong. Because clearly all you have to do is just press number one and just become one of the tornadoes and then just clone yourself at this point. 
But if you go too off like this alone, right, it makes no sense. So make sure you're like staying around with your clones sometimes, right? And fake it. <laughs> you know what I mean? By the way, if you've been enjoying my video so far, please give me a like and subscribe. Thank you. Let's say that your slicer was way off. Let's say that we like basically teleported and then use a slicer. And then what you guys want to do is actually adding the Halliday Assault in the middle because if you guys try to tornado and then try to 180 turn, it's really, really hard. Like for example, I'm going to show you guys right now. See, it just goes forward where you were. And then now we're in a weird spot. And so what you want to do is actually adding Halliday in the middle. So that way you guys have a nice turn in the middle. So this is what we're going to do. For example, if we went through the enemy like this and then use a slice, we want to do Halliday and then turn and then we want to do WRMB to use that tornado. And then look at that. Now we have a basically 180 turn just like that. Another good CCI I recommend is just using E somehow. Like let's say that we're fighting and then you have a good moment to just get in. Just press E and then go behind them. And then after that, you guys want to press RMB to give them a nice CC. And I'm going to show you guys just now. And then just like that, now we get a knockdown and that's when we want to do some kind of combo. This one is really nice because it has a knockdown, literally guys. We're using Paradise Beckons and this one has a knockdown, right here, knockdown. And they will literally stay on the floor for like 5 seconds. And so that's what we want to use as most of the time to give those kind of knockdown CCs. Floating is not so good because they do kind of stand up really fast. And so I really, really recommend you guys trying to use that knockdowns if you can on your CCs. As you guys can see though, if you guys hover the Ridge River, it says knockdown is only for PVE. And then the Chosen Blade, Shift Q, remember this one, we can use it. However, it only knocks down at the end when it explodes and so that one is really hard to aim. And so the best way to use that one is honestly give them a float right away. And if you actually land a float, then using this right away can maybe give them a knockdown at the end. After that quicksand, it does not have a knockdown unless if it's a black spirit. Decent also has knockdown on PvE only. And then if you scroll back down, it is, you know, Paradise Beckons. And so this is the only skill, honestly, that we guys can use to give like a legit knockdown. So that is why, guys, I really, really recommend you guys try to get a CC from Paradise Beckons. So there are actually three ways to use this skill, which is what we talk about is Arid Assault, which is pressing E and then pressing R and B. Just like that. Or we can use Oz the Minion, which is spacebar right here. And so when we use some kind of uh, ability, which is shift RMB and then pressing spacebar and then using RMB. Just like that. And then we can give it like a knockdown if you can. So adding Oz the Minion and then adding Paradise Beckon can be also a good combo for giving a nice knockdown if it actually works. And then lastly, we have Hourglass of Defiance, right? And so if you press F, and then let's say that the enemies is on the tornado. So if you press F again and then press RMB after that, maybe we can give them a knockdown on those opportunities. However, it does not have a forward guard or you know super armor on the paradise beckons. And so it can be very, very risky to use. And so honestly, the best one I would recommend is E going behind them and then pressing RMB and giving knockdown would be the good choice. And then the second best one honestly would be like Oz Dominion. And then let's say that shift RMB again and then spacebar, and then pressing R again, just to give that knockdown, for example. Guess what time it is, boys? It's time for combos. What I'm going to say, the best skill that we can use is basically number one, and then pressing E, and then go behind them, and then R and B for a knockdown. And if this works for you guys, I'm gonna show you guys a combo that is very, very, very good. So what we want to do is starting with our hockey, which is all spread, and get ourselves cloned up with a tornado. After that, if you have an opportunity, press E on the enemy, and go behind them, and then press RMB after that to give a nice knockdown. After that, shift RMB, space bar, and then C for quick cast, and then after that, shift C, and then shift Q to give more damage, and then shift to move for using sand warp. After that, using another hockey as number two. And then after that, if they don't have a grab or CCs, add these as well at the end. 
which is using Shift LMB, SRMB, and Shift E. Keep in mind that if we actually give first floating and then press E and then RMB, it doesn't work because pressing E already gives the second floating and then after that they basically become immune. But that's okay, I got some strategies and ideas what you guys can do for those floating situations. These are the situations if you guys actually land the floating on the enemy, this is what you guys can do on those scenarios. You guys get the point, right? If it's float, you guys have to do some kind of a quick ability before they stand back up. And if you guys actually get a knockdown with a rate assault, dude, freaking finish your hand. That's about it with Secession Hasashin in part one video. It can be very challenging, not gonna lie guys. I really think PvP wise, I think main is definitely harder than awakening. If you practice enough, I think you guys can do well. And so yeah, if you guys also like my video again, don't forget to subscribe and leave that like button and leave some comments, man. I would love to read them, some positive things, you know. Just be positive, guys. Like, I don't know why you guys are toxic. Anyhow, thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao.